Hello everyone and uh, and welcome. Today we are in a lake that's that's part of a Danish concept that's called put and take, which basically means we have a lake and then we add a lot of a lot of trout and then you can come and fish for these. So these are stock trout. And in this video I'm going to tell you a lot about the gear, the the types of flies that works best and the tactics in regards to how to actually fish and catch more fish, more of these stock rainbows in lakes like this. So today we're at Fylmose, a very nice lake where they have stocked rainbow trouts. And uh, and the first thing you need to do when, when you get to, uh, to to the location, to, to the to the put and take, as, as they're called in Denmark, where, where you want to fish, is of course to, to get your fishing license. And one of the things that's really important is that when you get your fishing license, uh, uh, be very careful that you notice all the diff you notice all the different rules because from lake to lake there is a bunch of different rules. If you're allowed to release a fish you catch, if there are certain species of fish you're not allowed. Many places they have uh, they have carps that are illegal to uh, to target and stuff like that. So be careful. Uh, about reading the rules before you start your fishing and of course pay for the amount of fishing time that you need. Here you cannot pay with the with with a credit card so you have to pay either with cash or with with an with an app. So uh, so so that's also something to consider. So read the rules before you start your fishing that makes everything just go smoother. So when fishing for these stocked fish, um, there is a lot of thing to say about the uh, the flies, and and basically there are some some key points uh, regarding sizes and and color schemes and stuff like that is, that is more important than the the actual specific patterns. So so when I have a fly that I, I really like and I fish a lot with something uh, something like this, this is a woolly bugger, a cat's whisker inspired small fly that's yellow and and white has the marabou tail. What I do is I have this in four different sizes. I have it in ten, eight, six, and four. And uh, and the reason why I do this is because um, the size actually matters quite a lot. Um, rainbow trout, as a general rule, prefers smaller, uh, smaller, uh, uh, smaller uh, things to feed on than uh, than brown trout, for instance. So, so it's a good idea to carry and to have in your box s generally smaller, smaller flies than what you would you would stock for, let's say, uh, let's say brown trout. So, so. Um, so have more more than one one color, and uh, and be sure to have some fly also that has some weight. A lot of my flies has has a small uh, cyclop beads in the front here, and that gives them kind of a, a jigging effect uh, in the water, walk in the water. That's really really good. So have a lot of different sizes. The next thing is have some different colors, um, and and by different colors I mean have something that is that that is more you know. Uh, 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 more intense, more vibrant in, in the color like this. This is really, really this is um, very, very fluorescent, very, very intense in the color. Uh, have something along those lines. White is a good color. Electric yellow is a good color. But also have something that is is less intense. Black is one of the best colors out there, and a woolly bugger in, in black is is one of the best flies ever made. So have something in black as well, um, and and have some some flies also. In, in in very drab, very very natural colors like like this. So you have the different sizes. You have a few different colors. You don't need blue. You, you don't need you know like like blue, orange, red, yellow. All the different colors. Select something that that you feel uh, is is good. And I, I recommend yellow and white and black as the three best colors I fish with. Um, and uh, and and then then build your box from that. Different colors, different weights, weights on there, and uh, and different sizes. That's that's really important. And then swap uh, on a day on the water like this. Swap between these until you actually hit uh, hit on what the the trouts are feeding on, uh, on 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 that particular day.
a small yellow bead head. Yellow is a really, really good color. Really, really good color. Um, regarding the gear, then there is a lot of different gear out there, and uh, and and getting the correct gear can be kind of a, a bit of a jungle. Uh, at Nordic Anglers, we have uh, we have decided that uh, that we do not want to sell uh, sell the cheapest gear. Uh, we have the gear that works, and uh, and in our shop we have we have designed some beginners. We call them beginners set of, uh, of of fly fishing equipment. And basically, what you get there is is you get a really really good rod, you get a good line, and you get you get a good a good reel as well. And we have we have combined these three things um, in order to make you a, a, a setup that will work and that will work so well that you can grow with this. And this is a setup that you will be able to use for many many years and you can bring into something else. Um, because a lot of the time if you buy if you buy a really really cheap setup, what you get is is you get a, a fairly fairly okay rod, you get a really cheap reel and then you get a line that is well the quality of the line often is is the one that lacks most in the cheap sets. And that is that is really really a shame because the most crucial thing of the fly cast and learning how to how to cast with a fly rod is having a good quality line because without a good quality line it's almost impossible to learn how to fly fish. So I really urge you if you want to if you want to start uh, embark on this magnificent journey that that fly fishing can be um, spend a, a little money on the gear. S uh, buy, do not buy the cheapest thing you can get because if you do that, then odds are you will never ever get more than you know just buying that and then try that for, for a couple of, 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 of trips and then, and then deciding that the fly fishing uh, fly fishing was not for you. Spend a bit of money on your first fly fishing uh, equipment, and and you will you will be rewarded with casting further it's, it's going to be much more easy to learn and and stuff like that so um, these kits these tier 4 kits we have in the shop we put those together we tie all the knots we we uh, we uh, attach the line we attach the leader and stuff like that so so these are perfectly and ideally suited for getting started with fly fishing they're a bit more expensive than 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 what you can buy at you know a, a warehouse or something like that but this works and we absolutely guarantee you that this will fit together and it will be a joy uh, to learn fly fishing uh, while using this. Um, of other things you need is of course you need the tippet. Um, when you have your att attached your leader you, you need your tippet and, uh, and have that with you uh, always. Your fly box with the flies goes without saying and, uh, and then um, some Polaroid sunglasses. They probably won't no, it's not necessarily to have have something as 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 high end as as the ones I use, but but a pair of polarized sunglasses is absolutely crucial for you to to be able to sight fish and see the trout and and locate where the trout are and stuff uh, and stuff like that. And of course, uh, a landing net is a nice thing, and then a pair of pliers for removing the hook from from the trouts. And if you have all that, then you are you're ready to uh, to embark on uh, on uh, on the fly fishing journey. So just out here, there is a couple of fish just cruising around, and what I'm doing is I'm trying to I'm trying to to locate when 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 it will be the best time of actually presenting the fly. Um, so so just start casting. One of them is 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 in a good is in a good place now, and then I cast the fly out, and I try to present this fly just in front of him, just like I did here. I let the fly sink a bit because he's down deep, and then I start slowly to retrieve to to pull the fly away from him. And actually, he's 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 it looks like it's chasing it. Yeah, it is. It is chasing it, ah! But then it then it weird off, and that sometimes happens. That would have been oh, that would have been so cool if, if I had, if I had a strike on, uh, on on just that. But but that happens quite a lot, you know. You see a fish that's actually following your fly uh, without taking taking the fly, but that just means you're doing something right, you know. So so uh, so so take that as 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 something that is encouraging, and just keep on. But the most important thing is present the fly so the fly swims away from the fish. Otherwise, you will never even have the fish chase your fly. Let's see if we can uh, if we can get one to to actually grab the fly now. Yeah. 
particular. <laughs> oh, I got one. Really, really nice. I saw him, uh, and he was, as I said, he they, he swam he swam towards me. So I cast the fly, completely perfect, presented, and then pulled it away from him, and he just came and grabbed it. He came and grabbed it. It was just textbook, textbook how it's done. Hello and welcome to Phil Mose Put and Take. This is a nice uh, nature place. We have a, um, a big ground, lots of people can fish here. We have uh, possibilities for fly fishing, spin fishing, all types of fishing. Um, the trout in the lakes are uh, in all sizes and uh, um, we do a lot of special things for, for holding this place as natural as possible. Um, we want to do it to keep the nature for fishermen so they have the best environment to come to vision. This, this lake is up to 14 meters deep and we have about uh, five acres of, of water here and, uh, and 10,000 of land so this is a very, very big place and all fishermen can uh, come here. When we have a full parking place there's still a lot of place for fishing. Another thing that's really important when you're out fishing is, uh, is, is to do a lot of different stuff all the time. For instance, uh, now the light is, is uh, the, the sun has gone a bit further down, so, so it's, it's difficult to spot as many fish. So now, uh, now we're just fishing blindly, and, uh, and that's a good thing also. Uh, so so when, you're, when you're fishing, um, it's important that you try to variate what you're doing as much as possible until you find exactly what is the recipe for, for, for that day's fishing. So try different sizes of flies, try different colors of flies and try to, to fish in different paces when you retrieve uh, and stuff like that. Keep spicing things up and keep doing different things until you find something that works. And once you've found something that works, uh, th that, will, that will probably work and work and work and work. So, 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 so do a lot of different things until you found, find out exactly what is, what is going to be the trick for that day. That's important. Try new things all the time. <laughs> 